Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm bringing you a special bonus video on how to create holiday brushes. I put out a video a couple of weeks ago where I show you how to use these brushes. So today I'm giving you all of the stuff that you didn't get in that other video and that was all the basics of the brushes that were used to create all the designs in that video. If you're interested in watching that video, I'll go ahead and leave a link here so that you can check that out as well. So let's go ahead and get started. The first brush that we're gonna be making is gonna be the snowflake brush. I'm gonna be using this one right here, the rounded rectangle tool. And I'm just gonna draw out a shape. So right now I've got a 988 by 23. What I wanna do is bring this down to 20. We'll leave this at 920. And we can always uh, change the size and everything as needed later on. But we're just gonna get started with this for now. Once you have that first shape, hold down the Option or Alt key, and then just drag that uh, shape layer down to make a duplicate. Letter V on the keyboard to make a selection. Now you have two that are pretty much identical. What we're gonna do is bring this one down in size. So this right here is gonna be our first stem. I'm gonna make another one. Option on the keyboard and drag it down. That is gonna be another uh, one of our stems. And we're just gonna bring these over. So I'm gonna match that up with the, with the longer line and then just turn it. So we'll leave a little bit on the edge right there. The same thing with this one. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing in nature is perfect. So don't, don't worry about this being perfect. All right, now that I've got those two, I can come over here to the layers, grab those two, option on the keyboard or alt if you're on PC, and then just drag them up. We're gonna do that about five times. We have all of these shapes here on the side. Grab that first one, hit the shift key on your keyboard, grab the last one, and we're just going to uh, group those. So this is gonna be group one. Okay, now we can duplicate this group. We're gonna recreate it five more times. So option on the keyboard and then just drag it down five times. So you should have a total of six of these. Okay, so you'll have group one and then several copies of that same group. Now we're just gonna grab uh, this one right here and we're gonna turn it. So we're gonna move on to the next one and we'll uh, do the same thing with this one. And I'm gonna go through and adjust, move each one of these groups into shape. So I'm gonna fast forward through this part, but basically all you wanna do is make sure that you have some overlap here at the bottom So now that we have this snowflake created, we can come over to edit, define brush preset, and we're just gonna call this a snowflake stamp. You don't have to make any adjustments to the brush at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer. So I can change the color here to anything that I want, and then just stamp out that uh, pattern anywhere that I want it. Now in that pack, I also gave you a snow flurry brush and that's what I'm gonna show you how to make next. Let's grab all of these groups that we just created, shift on the, grab the first one, shift and then grab the last one, command and E, control and the, the letter E, just to merge everything onto one group. So we have this snowflake right here, letter V to bring up these anchor points. And I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. I'll go ahead and make a copy of this option on the keyboard and then just drag it over. I'm gonna make it somewhat smaller and I'll put it right about there. Okay, so with these two shapes in place, we're gonna come back up to edit, define brush preset, and this one is gonna be called the flurry. What I wanna do with this brush is create some dimension. So we're gonna have some of the snowflakes kinda of drifting in and out, lighter colors, darker colors, and just, it's gonna be much more random than just the stamp brush. So let's go ahead and go over to our, 
our uh, brush settings here and go over how we want these to look for this brush. Okay, so our brush size is really big right now. I'm just going to bring it down. Um, I don't know. I'll leave it at 130 for now. And of course, we can always adjust these later on. I'm going to take my spacing up to 100%. And then we'll go over to Shape Dynamics. All right, in Shape Dynamics, we're going to take our size jitter all the way up to 100%. We'll go ahead and leave the controls off. Minimum diameter zero. Angle jitter will take to about um, 18, 16 to 18%. And we'll leave our controls off for that. Roundness jitter, we will change to about 12%. And our minimum roundness will leave at 25%. So everything else is fine there. We're going to check off scattering. Check off both axes and we're going to bump up our scattering to, let's just do it the easy way, 48% there. And we'll change our count to three. Our count jitter, we'll leave at zero and our control off for that. All right, next thing is going to be the transfer. Under transfer, we are going to change our opacity to 100%. Our control is going to be off. Jitter flow, 0%, and everything else is fine. I'm going to go ahead and leave smoothing checked off. And uh, that's it for this brush. We can save this as a new brush preset if we like. Bring this back over here, and I'm going to add a new layer just so we can test this out a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the size so that you can see it and I'm going to turn these two layers off. So basically what we did was just create some kind of dimension with this. This time I'm going to show you how to make that pine brush. What I'm going to do is use this ellipse tool and we're going to make a very skinny tall pine needle. We're going to duplicate this about nine more times. So I'm going to hold down my option key and just keep duplicating this. Okay, so we're going to start with our uh, base right here. I'm going to bring this over to this side. We just want to join these. Okay, so that's the first one. We'll do the next one exactly the same. And uh, don't worry that they overlap at the bottom, that's fine. This one will leave right here in the middle. And I'm just going to spread these out, kind of like a fan shapes. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that. All right, so what you're going to have is something like this. If you want to add more, you can definitely do that just to add a little bit uh, of thickness to this. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as it is and you can also make these needles some of them you know stagger them a little bit make some of them uh, shorter taller it's really up to you this is how I created mine so I'm going to come up to edit define brush preset and I'm just going to call this pine all right so once we have that pine brush I can go ahead and I'm just going to leave these uh, in a group and turn them off just in case we want to change them later on. I'm going to add a new layer up here. And I have my brush. Now we just need to make a few changes to it. So we're going to come over to the brush settings. You can access uh, brush settings right here on the side panel or you can access it up here. Uh, if you come over to brush settings, you can get it there. So that's going to come up for you. And what we're going to do is come to brush tip shape first. I'm going to lower the size of this brush. I still want it to be a little big so we can see it. Okay, that's fine. Maybe a little bit bigger. We'll do about 250. That's fine. Our angle, we're going to change to negative 83. Our roundness, we'll go ahead and leave as it is. And then we're going to change our spacing to about 25%. Okay, so now let's go ahead and move to shape dynamics. We're going to change our jitter to about eight percent. Our control is going to be pen pressure. Minimum diameter can stay at zero. Our angle jitter, we want it to jitter just a little bit and then we want our control to be direction. Our roundness jitter will take up to about nine percent. You can test out the brush and uh, see what it looks like and make adjustments as you go as well. 
So you might like something uh, a little bit different, but for now, this is what we've got. All right, let's move on to, let's move on to scattering. Our scatter is gonna be 20%. This is where we're just gonna add a little bit more substance to this uh, brush. So we're scattering 20%. We'll leave our control off and we're gonna bring our count up to three. So you see how much thicker that brush got down there when I added that count. Uh, the reason for the 20% scatter uh, is just to fill, fill in the areas a little bit more and our count jitter will stay at zero. Now we can come over to color dynamics. So we're gonna check off apply per tip. Our foreground background jitter is gonna be 75%. Our control is pen pressure. Our hue jitter is 2%, saturation 10%, brightness 14%, purity is zero. And then go ahead and check off smoothing as well. All right, now you can uh, save the, these settings as a new brush preset. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this color uh, to something like that. All right, let's, so let's go ahead and test out our brush. I have my brush tip shape at 150 right now. Um, and you can see it's picking up the foreground background color. Now we can also do, we can do this in any color. We can do purple. I know some people really like that purple Christmas trees. I see those everywhere. So we can do purple garland, um, green of course. And what we're trying to do is just get colors that are similar, you know, one light, one dark. And there you go, you have uh, the garland brush. And now we'll go ahead and show you how to create that bulb brush as well. So I'm gonna come back over here to the shapes tool and uh, I'm gonna choose that ellipse tool again. I'm gonna make another oval, something about there. So roughly half the width of the height. With this shape selected, I'm gonna come over to the pen tool and I'm gonna choose convert point tool. On my keyboard, I'm holding down the option key or alt key, you'll see that little plus sign come up. So when I'm holding that down, I'm just gonna click right here and uh, that's gonna take away that round point up at the top. So edit, define brush preset and I'm gonna call this bulb base, turn it off and put it in this group here with uh, the rest of the brushes. But we do have our bulb now and we can come back over here to our brush settings and make some adjustments to that. All right, so for the bulb settings, we're here in brush tip shape and I'm gonna change the size here to about 35 pixels. Our angle I'm going to change to 90 degrees. Roundness can stay at 100 and our spacing is going to come all the way up to 1000%. We want to make sure that those are pretty well spread apart when we apply them. All right, next we're going to look at shape dynamics. And in shape dynamics, we're going to change our angle jitter to 100%. Our control is going to be direction. Our roundness will take up to 30. Roundness jitter will take up to 30%. Uh, minimum roundness, we'll leave at 25 and everything else is fine. All right now we'll move over to color dynamics. Inside of color dynamics, we are going to adjust our foreground background color all the way up to 100%. Uh, we'll leave our control off. Our hue jitter will take to 50%. Saturation jitter will take up to 20%. Brightness we'll leave alone and our purity we'll go ahead and leave alone as well. And you can check off smoothing and that's pretty much it for our brushes. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Your brush isn't what's gonna make it look like a light bulb. It's the actual effects that you're gonna apply to it later on. So this is that bulb brush and it just kind of looks like leaves at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the background color just so that you can see the difference. So right now it just kind of looks like drops or leaves or something like that. Uh, what's actually going to make this are the styles. So I'm going to come back up here to my light bulbs and I'm going to go over to my, my effects, my styles. These are the holiday styles right here that I gave you with the pack. 
and I'll go ahead and link to that in the description of this video as well but we're going to use this one called glowing bulbs it'll give you this nice glow this style more than likely was made with a different size of the bulb so what we're going to have to do is come over right click and go to scale effects and we're going to have to work with this a little bit so we can make it glow much more or much less 